And Dar of Yay say, whenever I leave the house, and on whatever thing my eyes fall on, Sabr. Allah Ta'ala say, Wallahu yuhibbu al-sabirin. Allah Ta'ala asleep for the adhikin. School governing body of South Coast Madrasa. Abtaruha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Community Focus. In today's program, we look at South Africa's transition from apartheid to democracy. And it's now 20 years of South Africa's democracy. But unfortunately, many people are still trapped economically. People still don't have jobs. Uh, many people live in desperate conditions. However, thanks to one community organization, a non-profit organization known as Congress of Business and Economics. This organization has come up uh, in the community and it's training people, giving them empowerment skills. Joining me on the show is the executive director of this organization, Mr. Salim Aziz. Jazakallah and salamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us. Wa alaikum salam, Hassan. Thank you very much for inviting me to your studio. Uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Um, first and foremost, tell us when and why was this organization formed? Hassan, thank you very much for that. Uh, the Congress of Business and Economics was formed in the late 80s. Uh, it was formed under the ambit then of the Transvaal Indian Congress, which was essentially to mobilize a group of business people who were progressive, uh, who so supported the anti-apartheid struggle. And then when democracy was established in 1994, after a couple of years, it was decided to put the organization into dormancy because it was felt that apartheid had been eradicated, democracy had been achieved. And so the purposes the organization was set up for then uh, was no longer required. And then what happened uh, last year in December, a few of us who were involved in the organization were reflecting on the national development plan over a dinner and then we decided the time had come to re-establish the organization. And the reason for this is very straightforward. Everybody knows about it. We've established democracy in the country. But as you mentioned in your opening, uh, at an economic level, there are a lot of hardships. And so on the 16th of December, uh, 16th of November, sorry, we're hosting a dinner which will be attended. And through that dinner, we will celebrate heroes of the struggle, people like Ahmed Kathrada, Ambassador Mozi Mullah, uh, Isu Chiba, amongst others, and give them awards. But the thing, Hassan, is we can celebrate our past, but the youth of the future will judge us by what we do today. And so the idea as a community, yes, we've achieved democracy, but there is still a need to help a whole lot of people out there uh, and we can do this by helping them in enterprise, and we can talk about that further. Well, uh, Brother Salim, uh, tell us about this uh, Congress of uh, Business and, and, and Economics. Uh, what kind of training uh, do you give to people who come to, uh, to your centers? We don't have a center as such, but there's a couple of things that we're doing, Hassan. Let's talk about the training first, but there are other areas that uh, we intend touching on as well. So what we've done so far is we've got some youth in, we've done two workshops with them, basically to motivate them that there is an alternative in entrepreneurship, or even if they are professionals, that they consider business as an option. We've also piloted and we brought in a professional trainer in sales. And we presented these trainings without any charges to anybody, uh, just to make sure people have access to training and information. But there are other aspects, and, and as we were piloting, we've been learning and developing a few things. One is, if we can encourage people in the community to mentor, for example, you'll find in townships or even in their backyards, there are women who are battling, there's a recession there, 
And so they've got micro enterprises uh, making, whether it's achar or whatever it may be, selling food. How can we assist them? For example, they may want to grow. We may have skills. They may have needs for access to finance. I'm not saying one has to do total voluntary work completely, but if you spend 5% of your time uh, assisting this woman. Now, Muslim people, and Senzef confirms, are very charitable. Uh, I've been to a dinner recently. Senzef estimates the Muslim community in South Africa donates like over 1 billion rand a year to charity. But I was talking to Julie Ali last week on uh, Channel Islam radio station, and she acknowledged and, and recognized that we're happy to give money, but we don't give of self. Yet we have skills and we can benefit society. So besides coming together, networking, developing opportunities, reaching out to others, um, we can also give. And when we do, it's not about just giving to our own community. It's about benefiting society as a whole. And in specific, targeting women, particularly black women and youth, and ensuring they benefit from what we do. Absolutely. Um, I think, Brother Salim, this is a very good initiative, uh, Thank you. especially in a country like South Africa where we have high rates of unemployment. And, of course, uh, people within this country um, had, of course, that bad uh, past experience of apartheid, and people are not uh, enterprising. Uh, of course, we see people coming from other countries and starting businesses uh, in, 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 in townships. I think uh, the kind of initiative you're starting uh, is a very good one. But uh, tell us, who are some of the trainers uh, that you have? Are they technocrats? Are they experienced in their fields? Absolutely. Uh, one example, the sales training we did was conducted by a professional, Jacques de Villiers. Uh, whom we will use also going forward in few of our training programs around sales. But direct training is very expensive. And so what we've done uh, together with Growing Hands, which is an initiative in the Val area, they sponsor their training. What we intend to do, and we've already started the process, is to build a portal. And using technology today, how can we develop materials populated on the portal so people who need various skills uh, can go to the portal and get the information they require. This is a much more efficient way, we believe, uh, to deliver these skills. That was Mr. Salim Aziz, Executive Director of the Congress of Business and Economics, uh, talking to us about the empowerment programs that they have started uh, in the community. Let's go for a short ad break. Inshallah, when we come back, we continue speaking to Mr. Salim. <laughs> Welcome back to our community showcase and in today's program with me in studio is Mr. Salim Aziz, Executive Director of the Congress of Business and Economics. Welcome back from that break, uh, Mr. Salim. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, Brother Salim, tell us, um, how, do, uh, how do you manage to run these programs? Who funds the, uh, the, the organization? Hassan, thank you very much for the question. Let me first point out to you, our program is limited, and we're limited by the resources and funds we have. So up to now, we've been very fortunate. Uh, we've had generous sponsors who've stepped in who funded programs, even as I speak to you, we have sponsors who've made these commitments. But as I repeat, uh, these are voluntary initiatives. Uh, no money is going to be sufficient in solving all the economic problems we have in the country. What we need, psychologically at least, is volunteers, people who are willing to spare some time uh, unpaid, because I've noticed in South Africa, people volunteer, but they expect to be paid. I'm not talking about people who receive training. I'm talking those who deliver, who have skills. Unless they come forward, uh, develop some of the programs, uh, share some ideas with us, make themselves available to make some of the YouTube videos we have in mind. It's only through this voluntary effort 
that we'll be able to achieve what we do. Um, tell us, what forms of training uh, do you intend to uh, give to those who come to the centers? Look, fundamentally, let, let me talk about the portal first because that's an interesting concept. Having lived abroad many years after having served at the Department of Foreign Affairs, what I've noticed uh, abroad is every business seems to have a mentor. And so my observation is, yes, there is mentorship in South Africa. We've been talking to business partners, but they have paid professional mentors. We don't have a concept of voluntary members, uh, voluntary mentors. And so for starters, through the portal, we'll develop tools that will enable mentors to mentor small businesses. So it might be skills to touch on your question directly. Finance for non-financial managers. How to do a business plan. How to sell. What is marketing? Today everybody uses social media. How do you use social media to market your business? So very, very basic skills through the portal. Secondly, there's been some direct training that we've done. And as I said to you earlier on, Yes, these are necessary, they should be open to everybody, but they're expensive, and we can't do much of those. So, to be very frank with you, ours is a very limited intervention, but hopefully if we get this right and we scale it up, in a small kind of way, we'll start making a difference. Um, hopefully, if uh, this initiative grows uh, in into a bigger um, organization, um, do you hope to cover the entire country? Yes, we would, but not directly. Uh, and also, and I, I, it's an excellent point you raised, Hassan. We're not in competition with existing universities and colleges. Those are institutions of excellence, and we don't want to compete with them. Ours is we leveraging the resources and capabilities of our community to the benefit of those who cannot afford it. So instead of establishing a national footprint, we would rather partner with other organizations and like-minded people throughout the country, and for that matter, even on the continent. Because, for example, coming back to the portal, the technology allows us to extend our footprint without a physical presence and without going into unnecessary expenditure. Well, um, some viewers out there might be wondering uh, that if you went for this training, would you be given some form of certificate? Not necessarily. Our training is practical. Uh, it's directed to enabling small businesses to do what they do better, but to get actually involved in business. You need a certificate, we would recommend quite strongly go to college. But on very specific interventions, we would come in, train, uh, you can go online, and as soon as the portal is established, get these resources free. As I emphasize, the emphasis is not on certification, but the ability to conduct business. Absolutely. So in other words, you're going to be imparting skills into people and of course they'll be getting the needed skills and they, they, they can start what they want to do. Mr. Salim, there is a huge misconception in South Africa that uh, the black community is not enterprising uh, compared to the Indian uh, community. Uh, what do you think is uh, the cause of this problem and how is the Congress uh, of Business and Economics uh, going to change uh, this, this, this perception by helping this community? Asin, I think the level of entrepreneurship probably has some explanation historically in the apartheid system, uh, maybe at the psychological level. But as I in intimated earlier on, we have to be optimistic. Entrepreneurship is not the only solution to economic growth in the country. We have high levels of unemployment, and so certainly if some people can go and work in industry and there are opportunities for them, excellent. On the other hand, for those who don't want to become involved in enterprise, or who want to become involved in enterprise, to give them the opportunities uh, to share information, to share knowledge, to welcome them, to embrace them, to work with them, and to ensure that they are successful in what they do. One important point that I just want to share by way of comparison it would seem that the large majority of South Africans of the African community who are involved in enterprise are essentially survivalists. That they're doing this out of necessity, not being able to find jobs. Uh, also, 
one of the other handicaps they have is the large majority at maximum have primary school education. This is very different from some of the research I was looking at in Europe, for example, where small enterprises have tertiary education and can get involved in innovation. Locally, it's about buying and selling, trying to make a profit, uh, just to make ends meet. The question is, and the challenge for all of us, not just government, is how do we move this grouping to becoming from micro enterprises, small enterprises, working symbiotically with them to become uh, wholesalers and grow. But in the process, make sure their children are educated, uh, can play a different role in the economy. But we do this very, very importantly with respect, modesty and humbleness uh, in a way of supporting rather than commanding. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Salim, we're going for a short ad break. When we come back, we we'll continue speaking to you. With me in studio is uh, Mr. Salim. Aziz, who is the Executive Director of Congress of Business and Economics. We're talking about empowerment and upliftment of the community. Uh, Mr. Salim, welcome back. Uh, we were talking about uh, how communities can get empowered. And uh, I wanted to find out what motivates you uh, to help the community when many people in our community don't actually care about what goes on in the community. I said, what really mobilizes, as I indicated earlier on, was the National Development Plan. The National Development Plan calls for an act of citizenry, and it points out very clearly that there are groups that are excluded from the economy, particularly women, and so you see low level of entrepreneurial activity from that grouping, and youth by and large. Now we can sit and moralize, and we can blame the government and blame everybody else. For example, on crime, uh, we can blame everybody the issue is, what do we do about these things? Entrepreneurship, job creation is one way of dealing with the issue. And so it's not necessarily a moralistic reason that we re-established. Uh, it was very practical and a very pragmatic analysis of what's going on in the country. But also, quite importantly, in doing this, uh, it's not just people are giving. They will also benefit because part of what we are going to do uh, is ensure that, for example, professionals are matchmaked with medium and successful entrepreneurs. So as they network and develop relationships, it's to their mutual benefit. It raises their profile and increases the probability of success of their businesses. And yeah, that's the background that we come from. Uh, Mr. Salim, as we wind up our discussion, um, viewers out there would like to know um, uh, how, how do they get in touch with you, how do they uh, locate the address of uh, the training? Uh, and when is the next uh, training? Hassan, we will be using the local newspapers like the uh, Leisure Sun, amongst others, um, Fordsburg Indicator, to advertise programs that come down the line. We've also got a radio, uh, Channel Islam, that's decided to become a media partner through Julie Ali. And so we will be advertising these programs. We hire venues. And so starting in the new year, we'll start with a new tranche of training programs. Also, uh, people can reach, at, uh, reach us at our office, 011-0266-446. Uh, they can speak either to Yusuf or Yasmin, and we'd be more than happy to keep them on our database. Uh, finally, Mr. Salim, uh, tell us who are the kind of people that you're targeting because you know our community has many affluent people and uh, you, you, you may get a lot of people coming there. Who are the exact people that you're targeting? Hassan, we, we haven't differentiated uh, exactly who should and shouldn't come. Our programs are open to anybody who's wanting and willing to attend. Uh, particularly micro enterprises, small businesses who want to attend some of these sessions, more than welcome. Uh, if there are people from medium-sized businesses, you're most welcome. But the idea, particularly the middle to corporate professional, where you have skills and you feel you can make a difference, please get in touch with us because we, we provide that platform for you 
to channel your skills, your experience, your capability to those who can benefit from it. And most importantly, the idea is to develop a symbiotic relationship between the micro, the small, the medium, and hopefully together can grow into corporate businesses. We were still talking about empowerment. Uh, Mr. Salim, do you work with other organizations? Absolutely. At the moment, uh, we've got a memorandum of understanding that we've signed with the Ahmed Katrada Foundation. Theirs is a program to develop a non-racial society. Ours is a very specific interest around business and economic issues. Uh, we work closely with it's a project called Growing Hands, which was developed out of Roshkol, focused specifically at micro-enterprise development. Harun Pochi, who's worked on it for over 28 years, has deep experience and wants to develop this project that we've been working on with him. We also work very closely with Senzef. As you know, in the last five or six years, they've been trying to look at entrepreneurship development as an alternative to giving, and that's a very good example of how people have moved from just giving charity to moving into development. It's early years, they have a lot of experience and we work very closely together. We will obviously down the line develop partnerships with other organizations. And how do you position yourself in relation to uh, black or white businesses? Excellent question, Hassan. Um, white businesses have been traditionally org organized. Um, Obviously, there's been politics in the country about their organizations, who they represented, what they stood for. As an alternative, there has been a rise of black business organizations. The CB has good relationships with both parties. And so, whilst you have these two streams of movement, Indian businesses, by and large, some of them have joined these organizations, but we are not part of the organized business movement. From that point of view, we're more than amenable and uh, very open to people joining these organizations, have no problems with that. Ours is a very specific purpose, and so we encourage people to join both. But down the line, what we would envisage and hope for is we have one organized business movement in the country that everybody belongs to. Um, what kind of programs do you intend to do in the future? I said, one interesting project, but we won't be able to do it in the short term. It's going to require putting some good minds together. Uh, is developing a kind of composite index. And so hopefully if we take another two years or so in developing this index, and this index uh, roughly one would call a growth and diversity economic index. The idea behind this index is as we move forward, can we have a benchmark to measure progress in economic down the line, progress towards the diversity of ownership in the economy, the engagement of women in the economy, the engagement of youth in enterprise and related activity, uh, ensuring that there are skills distributed throughout the country, um, ensure that there are relationships that we're forming businesses across the lines, and bringing these diverse groups in these businesses. So if we can build a model and use existing statistics to populate this model, and then everybody, all decision makers, nonprofits, governments can get involved uh, in using these indicators so we can measure year by year how we're making progress towards achieving a diverse economy. Having stated so, we also need a growth dimension to this indicator because it's not simply about distributing what exists. We need to grow it at the same time. It's a project that will take a bit of time, but if it succeeds, it would be an amazing tool. Mr. Salim, when you speak about uh, distribution of, 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 of resources and, and, and businesses, uh, there's a huge problem in South Africa where there's huge income inequality, uh, there's huge inequality between the rich and the poor. The gap is so wide. Absolutely. And uh, when, when, when you look at most businesses in the country are owned by white people, um, when do you think uh, will the country see total transformation in terms of uh, economic ownership of business? I'm not in the predicting business. Um, let's also agree that businesses are in competition with each other. And they're not just in competition domestically, they're in competition internationally. And so we need to approach these questions in a very pragmatic, in a very clever kind of way. But in the final analysis, we all swim or sink together. 
So fundamentally, it's in our mutual interest to address these social inequalities. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Salim. Hassan, thank you very much for having me. Well, that was uh, Mr. Salim Aziz, the Executive Director, Congress of Business and Economics, speaking to us about community empowerment programs that his organization is starting. From me, Hassan Islo, and the entire team, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما 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 صلوا عليه